So we're going to start boxes this week, and I hope that you're able to create a box that's custom to you in the end, and we're going to start early enough that I hope we have enough time for that. Uh, as you look at the box, you can see it's quite simple. Now, simple doesn't mean it's going to be easy for you to build, mainly because you have to be so intentional about everything you do when you're building a simple project, because mistakes show easy. There's not a lot of, uh, I guess, chances to hide things or or cover them up because you're gonna have one sheet of plywood to work with and you can't be grabbing another sheet of plywood or grabbing another person's scrap, at least you don't want to because you want all of the plywood to be used on your box to match uh, the rest of the box. And again, with a simple project, all those things are seen easily uh, when someone's not intentional. And so you'll, you'll learn that about building any project that simple doesn't always mean easy. Uh, so I don't care what you do on your box, you can put some thought into that into the future, whether it is, you know, cutting something on the scroll saw, um, doing some you know, scribing or etching, doing something just with Sharpies, transferring something on your box uh, from the internet, uh, anything that you can do uh, with stickers or, or something like that if you're into, uh, if, you know, you've got a cricket or your mom has something that she does some card making and stuff like that. This one's very... Uh, this one was quite hard to do. This was an inlay that I did. And so I had to cut him out and then router him out and then inset uh, the jump man into the box. Um, something that if you wanted to do, we'd have to make time for a lunch or something like that. Okay, so your box is going to start off uh, unfinished like this. And this is, this is clean, ready to go. It's made out of birch. As you can see, the birch has a, has a, 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 a very def definite pattern to it uh, that I chose from a piece of plywood. The piece of plywood that you pick... Uh, you can choose either like, you know, one face or the other face and uh, then you have to keep track of that face so the same face of the plywood ends up to the outside of the box the whole time. Something intentional that you have to do. Uh, remember, you're not making a box out of like birch or oak, you're making a box out of veneer plywood. And if I've showed you that veneer before, it is paper, paper thin. So another reason that makes this box kind of hard, it's not a sawhorse made out of uh, you know, two by fours where you can just sand a mistake out or sand, sand, sand. This is, this is paper thin, and so you cannot sand on this birch veneer for much more than 10 seconds and you've worn through it. Um, so again, uh, chipping or tearing out the veneer on the saw blades uh, is also something that happens quite often for students. So the protection and the, I guess, intentionality of everything that you do in this box um, is going to have to be a little bit high focus. All right, so in overall, to start off this box, you're gonna have to use a half, half inch sheet of birch plywood. Uh, in general, the box is about 24 inches wide, about 14 inches tall, and 14 inches deep. Now, that's all relative kind of for size. If it ends up being a little different size, that's fine. But in general, 24 by 14 by 14, or, or however you wanna say it, relatively. And uh, that's what we're gonna try to lay it out. And what it becomes in the end after we make things fit uh, is what it'll be. Everyone's might be a little bit different. All right, so at the back of the classroom, um, you're going to have to find a sheet of half-inch plywood. The sheet of half-inch plywood is a 4x8 oversized sheet of plywood. And it should service two boxes. So at the beginning of this project, you're going to want to maybe partner up with someone so that you're working off the same sheet of plywood. You won't need them after day one or day two when you have this thing ripped up. But originally, you're going to, you know, only need a half a sheet of plywood, so the other half of the sheet of plywood is for someone else, so find someone to work with. Okay, so I couldn't find a full sheet of half inch plywood in my, in my shop, so I only have about two thirds of a sheet of plywood here. It's eight feet long, but it's not four feet wide. But it'll be enough to build my box, so just keep that in, uh, in your head as, as I go through this. All right, so the grain wrap around the box I mean, the box is going to be 14 inches tall, we said. And so we're going to have to cut a, a piece out of here 14 inches tall by 24 inches wide. Now, keep in mind that it, there's not really a process or a very smart process where you could cut out one piece at a time. So, you know, 14 inches tall and 24 inches wide. Let's say this is our front, okay? So we able, this, is, this is going to be the front of our box. 24 by 14. Except for that, we would never cut out one piece at a time. 
because we don't have a tool that would do that really well. I mean, we have a portable circular saw we could do that with. We could table saw and stop, table saw and stop, but it's not the best process. So usually when you lay something out, you start with like, what am I gonna have to do for full rips on the table saw? Because if I start ripping this on the table saw, I'm gonna have to continue ripping it the whole way. Lucky for us, there's not one piece that's like a lot bigger than the rest. They're all, the box is 14 inches tall all the way around. It's a very, like it's, it's just a rectangular prism, right? So what I suggest is, no, you're not gonna use this line to fall on the table saw. This is just me mapping out the box to make sure that it fits onto the half a sheet of plywood and I don't have to grab another sheet of plywood or let's me, I'll show you um, how it's gonna let me think about grain wrapping. So uh, continue that 14 inches rip across and I got some water damage at the end of my sheet here so I'm not gonna to wanna to use this but, um, okay. And so now I've made this rip. So I've made this full 14 inch rip and on this I'm gonna to have to lay out um, everything that's 14 inches tall or at least you know, some of the box the portion is tall. And so what I do next is I think to myself, well, I want the grain to wrap or fold around the box. So if I do front, the next I want to do the side, and then I'll do the back, and then I'll do a side again. Now, front and back are really relative. You're not going to actually choose the front or back of your box until you find out, oh man, I damaged that piece, so I'll make this the front or I'll make this the front. Um, so when I say front, I'm actually going to change this to back, not that it really matters, but just because if, there's going to be one place in the box where the grain doesn't wrap, and that's going to be the beginning and how it matches up to where you finish at the end. And so I'd rather have that place where the grain doesn't wrap at the back. So just so my, so my mind's working this out. So I'm going to go after my 24 inches. Remember the side, it's, 20, it's 14 inches deep. So this 14 inches high, it's also 14 inches deep, the box. So the side is going to be another 14 inches. So after the back, I'm going to do another 14 inch cross cut here, like so. So front, side, and then I'll have the back so that the grain continues wrapping. So um, there's another 24 inches right there, like so. And there's another cross cut. I'll number it here, so one is to one, so when I cut it, I'll know what wraps to, to what. Two is to two, and then three is to three. And again, I need another 14 inch side here at the end. 14 like so. And so there, there's my little map of my pieces. So one front, side, a back, and a side, or front and back can be switched and, and vice versa. But I wanna keep my grain wrap, one is to one, two is to two, three is to three, and the last one will be four is two. Doesn't really matter because it's not gonna match up so much to that side. Okay, so if you think of a rectangular prism, that's taking care of my, you know, every piece on a rectangular prism except for the top and bottom. The top and bottom have not been cut yet. They don't really have to grain wrap to anything because they're going to be, you know, it's going to be kind of a horizontal grain that's gonna hit a, um, a horizontal grain at the side of the box. So there's nothing to really match up and there's no way that I could do that. Uh, but I do want to make sure I'm working from the same sheet of plywood so it looks like it was cut from the same, you know, piece of wood. All right, now the top and bottom, remember this thing is 14 inches deep. That's why I made this 14 inches wide. So you're going to need another 14 inch rip. Um, and if you start that rip, you're going to have to rip the whole way. So there it is at uh, kind of 28 inches. Again, it's just not, I'm not thinking about saw curves or anything like that. I'm just thinking about... Um, I'm mapping this out so it fits in this piece of plywood. Okay, now, this, is, this one's going to be easier. You need a piece for the top. Uh, it's going to be, you know, 24 inches wide, the same as the, the front or the back, and the 14 inches deep. So it's 14 inches by 24. And then you're going to need one for the bottom, which will be exact replica, another 24, so we're at 48. Now, I'm not sure if my arms can stretch this far. I'm not going to differentiate yet the top from the bottom. I'm just going to give myself a mark that I need this 48 inches, two 24s by 14, and I need like for a top and a bottom. I don't actually need to cut those yet, but I need to make sure I have enough wood for it. So if you look at what I've done here, I've only used like one 14 inch rip of plywood, and then this second 14 inch rip of plywood, I've only used half of it because 48 inches is half of the 96 inches or the eight feet. So what's left here, this, the rest of this rip, 
is going to actually be for your partner. So this is top and bottom partner. Okay. So, so far you've got a rip and a half for yourself and a half a rip for your partner. Now remember, mine isn't, isn't a full sheet of plywood, but yours on your full sheet of plywood, you would easily get one more rip, another 14 inch rip, which would be totally for your partner. So a mirror image of what you did for your, you know, front side, back side, and uh, they would get the same thing. And then you would share the third one or the middle one, sorry. Now you're gonna end up with something left very similar to mine when you're done. So after you cut your 14 inch rip, your shared rip, and your partner's rip, you're gonna end up with a very similar size piece of plywood to rip, about six inches. And this is perfect because if you remember, for your final, for your final, inside your box, you're gonna to have to build a smaller box that fits inside. And it would be great if that, if that matched up to what you're doing. And so it's not gonna be enough, but it will definitely be a nice piece that you know matches up. And so this rip that you're left with is going to be a save for final. And at least there'll be enough material to make some of your final. All right, so that's where we're at. You can make your way down. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is, once you've got this laid out, we're going to talk about ripping this thing on the table saw. All right. Okay, so we know that we want 14 inch rips. You have a full 4x8 sheet of plywood to hold on this table saw, and the first cuts that you make, you don't want that cut to define your project right from the get-go. Um, so I would suggest with the extra material you have that you oversize your cuts so that you can make a mistake. Um, so instead of ripping to exactly 14 inches, I'm going to rip to 14 and a quarter. Uh, that gives me a quarter inch to like recut if I want to. And I definitely will. So when I set the table saw, I'm going to set it to 14 and a quarter inches. And it doesn't have to be real specific because I'm going to be cutting it again to 14. When you set your blade height, uh, you don't want your blade height to be much more than... i got a strap here. Much more than the half inch plywood that you're going to be using. Uh, just for safety purposes. Okay. Now, before you start your boxes, you might want to put a new blade in the table saw, although ripping, the ripping operation, not so much. The ripping operation isn't gonna do a lot of tear out, but before you start cross cutting, you definitely want a nice new blade in with sharp teeth and not a lot of pitch build up, so that you don't get a lot of tear out. Um, but that probably won't be today. All right, so the table saw is set to 14 and a quarter. Um, now. When you get set up for this, you're gonna have to start the blade ahead of time. And let's just talk about positioning on a full sheet of plywood. Mine's not even as big as yours is gonna be. But you're gonna to have to cut this by yourself. So position that you should have for a full sheet of plywood is standing in this corner. Remember at all times when ripping something on the table saw, you have to keep pressure against the fence, right? So you've gotta have this pressure against the fence. Uh, you've gotta be keeping the material down, or in our case, flat. Uh, which is kind of you have to find, and we've got to put a force forward. So standing in the back of the sheet of plywood allows you to push forward, but doesn't allow you to do, uh, keep the material tight against the fence very well. So you want to keep a big arm span, your right hand, doesn't matter if you're left handed, you still put your right hand here, and your left hand at the side of the piece of plywood. And again, just a reminder, always watch the fence, don't watch the blade. The cut will be determined by what you do with the fence. Okay? So, you get that rip done. <laughs> So this piece is oversized, so that's great. If I made a mistake, if the piece 
came away from the fence or did a little wobble, that means I've messed up this side. And I've got to keep track of that. Because this side is a factory and it's still good. And so I can use it to recut this side. So if I made a mistake, I would mark this out so I can recut this when I cut the 14. But if you made a mistake there, that means that the corresponding side to it um, that was on the other side of the blade is also bad. So the, what you would not want to do is take that sheet of plywood and rip it again. You have one more chance, and that is to flip your board around and use the other factory cut to cut your, your other 14 and a quarter inch piece. If you do that, where my piece is short, you can't make a mistake too much now because if you do, then the, the one in the middle for your partner or your shared one, whichever one it becomes, is going to have bad cuts on both sides and you'll have to work, um, it depends how bad it is. Um, obviously we can fix it, but without me there this week, it might be a little more tricky. So if you didn't make a mistake and you have a good cut, then we're just going to do your second rip. It's easier to go with the this ball. Alright, so I'm on the fence, standing where I am. Turn your hands to the side. All right, so you're going to be having one more sheet than me, but I've got enough for myself, a uh, full sheet, a half a sheet, a half sheet for someone else, and then I don't have that third sheet for the other person, and I've got a piece that says save for final. So I'm going to keep track of these and uh, where they are. So that's all I want to show you today. You have to be real patient with each other. Uh, you got two table saws. Never rush anyone on this process because first of all, it's a table saw process. Uh, give people their space. But the thing is, I want people to keep track of this plywood and I don't want to be looking, people to lose things or people claiming things that that's not theirs. So good luck ripping that up. Uh, if you're thinking about cross cutting operations, how are you going to cross cut this? Just to be, just so that no one goes ahead, this is not a cross cut operation that we're going to do on the compound miter saw. Uh, we're going to use a uh, sled on the table saw, or we're going to use a jig that I've made for the portable circular saw, or what you guys would call the skill saw. All right, so get those ripped up, and we'll talk about cross cutting another day. Thanks.